Hi, I'm Bud. Welcome to Kimber's Kingdom, the home of everything Kimber the White Lion. On this channel, I'm hoping to connect with fellow Kimber fans like you. So if there's something you'd like to see more of, or less of, let me know in the comments. I want to make the best videos I can for you guys. Today's video is part of a series exploring the elements it takes to make a great animated series or comic. Using the example of Kimber the White Lion, my personal favourite animated series of all time. Specifically, today's video is about how to write an effective soundtrack for a television series, using the soundtrack of Kimber the White Lion as an example. Honestly, there's so much to talk about with this soundtrack that I don't even know where to start. The instrumentation is top-notch, and the way the instruments all play off each other is great. The harmony and melodies sound absolutely incredible, though I don't really know enough about music theory to talk about that with confidence. But probably the best place to start is the soundtrack's use of light motifs, since that's something pretty much universally applicable to all TV soundtracks. So what is a light motif? Well, a light motif is a short musical phrase, usually a melodic one, but sometimes a harmonic or rhythmic one, that represents a particular character, place, or concept in a story. Think of the Imperial March from Star Wars that plays whenever Darth Vader or something else related to the dark side or the Empire is on screen. Now in film soundtracks, leitmotifs are usually used in a pretty distinct and discreet way. The Imperial March will play on its own, or the Force motif might play on its own. Often the light motifs will be changed slightly to fit the mood. For example, a version of the force motif with darker harmonization plays when Luke's family are killed. But it's still very clear what light motif this is supposed to be. It's still distinct and discreet. But TV soundtracks are a different beast. While in a film you're telling a very focused story, where you're getting from point A to point B, in a TV series you're starting at point A, then wandering around to look at every little detail and side road on the way to point B, and often by the end of the series you don't even get to point B anyway. This more complex and blurry story structure necessitates a more complex and blurry use of light motifs. And that's exactly what I Sao Tamita's Kimber the White Lion soundtrack does. In Kimber the White Lion, rather than being distinct and separate phrases, all the different light motifs throughout the series are merged and blurred together to create complete sentences, if you will. Rarely will you hear the entirety of Kimber's action motif. <laughs> on its own. Rather, you'll hear Kimber's action motif and a bunch of other motifs all blended into one piece. Light motifs are also often used so loosely that it's almost hard to tell whether they're actually there. Tamita often uses just a couple of notes from a light motif rather than the whole thing. Or uses the rhythm but totally changes the melody. to subtly hint at an idea or character without making it obvious that he's putting them in the viewer's mind. This is incredibly effective. You don't notice it consciously until you look for it, but subconsciously your brain picks it up and it helps you understand all the little nuances of the story. And it hits so much harder on an emotional level because your subconscious has picked up on all those little relationships between the characters and situation on screen that the music is quietly conveying. 
Before we move on from the topic of leitmotifs, I want to talk about my favourite specific examples of how they're used in Kimber the White Lion. Take notes because if you can pull off this kind of thing in your own series, it's going to be awesome. First of all, I want to talk about the Leo motif. We first hear this play when Kimber's mother appears to him in the sky, and this gentle choir sings this short four-note melody. And then it's seemingly not heard again for the rest of the series. Until the episode Scrambled Eggs, a seemingly light-hearted and silly episode where the jungle's eggs get mixed up and Kimber ends up caring for one. And then Kimber sings to the egg, and then this happens. I got chills! Kimber remembers his mother and right when that happens the same leitmotif plays from the very first episode. Okay, maybe I'm a nerd and no one else gets excited about things like that, but whoa! <laughs> the first time you heard that you wouldn't have even realised it was going to be a leitmotif. It was just four notes that blended into the rest of the song. Yet the second time you hear it you realise, oh! Tamita actually planned that the whole time! It's just awesome. And then there's the human world leitmotif. This first plays in the wind in the desert when Kimba first encounters a human city. It then plays again twice in Fair Game. First, there's a French-sounding variation of the theme with an accordion, when Kimber is visiting Paris, his second experience of a human city which we see on screen. But the last two uses of this motif are where it gets brilliant. At the end of Fair Game, Kimber and Speedy imagine a world where humans and animals live together in peace and understanding in this future city, and this quiet and wistful brass version of the motif plays to convey Kimber's longing for the day when animals live in the same comfort as human civilization. Then we get this upbeat version of the motif with this playful electric guitar and joyful bright brass section, as if Kimber and Speedy have just been swept away by this wonderful dream and just for a moment have forgotten that it isn't real and are just enjoying imagining what it'd be like to be there. And then they sneak Kimber's action motif in there, to show how what Kimber's been fighting for all this time is this dream. Every time Kimber runs into action to save someone or go on some adventure, that motif plays, and then it's blended in with the human world motif here, to show what Kimber's been fighting for all this time is to have animals and humans live together in peace. It shows that that dream is what drives him.
This whole little musical paragraph, if you will, is so brilliantly structured. It says so much about this scene and the complexity of the character's thoughts, feelings and ideas with music alone. I can't even... But wait, I said the motif was used one more time, right? You bet it was. In the episode The Last Poacher, we see a group of poachers killing animals for financial gain. We see the amount of terror and heartbreak they inflict on the animals. And we see the danger Kimber and his friends have to go through to stop them. And then this plays. Did you hear that? It's the human world motif. But unlike all the bright and energetic times we heard it earlier, it sounds slow, eerie, melancholic. It shows us that civilization isn't all peace, love and happiness. It shows the twisted side of humanity and human technology, how it's used not only to help others but also to harm and exploit other creatures. And it reminds us how far Kimba has to go before his dream is achieved. Through the use of a minor key version of the motif, dark sounding harmonization and reverb, it creates this sense of distance as if the music is very far away, obscured by fog on the other side of a massive chasm or ocean. And remember, the music that's playing is the same motif from Kimber's dream in Fair Game. So this is showing us how far away Kimber's dream truly is from being realized. And by the way, none of this is said aloud in the episode. No one in The Last Poacher actually talks about how this shows the difficulty of achieving Kimber's dream or the twisted nature of human civilization. Rather, we the audience pick up on it all subconsciously. And we leave the episode with this inexplicable feeling of thoughtfulness and bittersweetness. That's how powerful this soundtrack is. Alright, I'm finished rambling about leitmotifs now. Though hopefully some of that rambling gave you some great ideas for your own soundtrack. I hope it was helpful and I wasn't just gushing for the sake of gushing. Anyway, another thing I have to talk about, as mentioned earlier, is the instrumentation. I touched on it a little already, but there's so much to talk about here. The first thing I want to talk about is the way the soundtrack uses reverb, which is absolutely something you should consider in your own work. I'm not sure if it was achieved using early electronic processing, which Tamita was a pioneer of, or by physically placing the instruments in a hall with stone walls or somewhere similar to create the same echoing effect, but it sounded absolutely brilliant. Here are some examples. My gosh, doesn't that sound beautiful? 
It sounds like they're literally playing in a huge expansive jungle with the sound of the instruments echoing off the trees in the distance. The effect creates such a sense of atmosphere and really makes the environments of the show feel real. It makes you feel like you're there. If you have scenes in your series where your characters are in some magical place or even just out in the wilderness of nature, consider using reverb like this to create that little extra sense of atmosphere and make your audience feel like they're really there. But of course that's not all there is to the instrumentation here. Alright, so uh, after I recorded the audio, I realised this video is going to be way too long, uh, so I've decided to break it into two parts. I'm really sorry for keeping you waiting, but I just didn't want to leave anything out. So uh, once part two comes out, I'll put a link to it right here, and if you're not subscribed already, make sure to click subscribe so you get notified when part two comes out, and yeah, thanks for your patience. The wait will be worth it, I promise. That's all for now fellow animals. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you won't miss a thing. If there's something Kimber related you'd like to see a video about, leave a comment. I'd love to hear your suggestions. I might look ferocious, but I don't bite, promise.